Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. We're going to go through what's new in Update 2 for IC 2016 that was released last week. We have several new items to go through as well as additions and improvements to some regular toolkits. So we'll start by going through the new dynamic projects concept and those changes to the well queries and we'll go through a quick update to the IPIC common data that's come across and then we'll go on to some charts and display improvements and changes including a new dynamic template that will go to the database for your well and search out all that data that's stored. So if we start with creating a new dynamic project we go up the same as usually you go up and create a new project the only difference in this dialogue now is there's a new drop down and this lets you pick static or dynamic. Now every project that's been created prior to update 2 in 2016 is a static project. You've gone in and manually chosen the wells to populate your project. What a dynamic project will do is use a filter to maintain that link to automatically update the well list associated with this project. So you could have a project created based on any number of queries. And while we're in here, I'm going to show you what's new in the well queries. So we'll just make a new one. And hopefully the first thing you see is the fact that the component selector has automatically been opened when you create a new one. Now most of these tabs are the same as they were pre in previous builds. The well data tab has been changed slightly. We've removed the zone of interest tab and combined it with the general well data tab. So if you are looking just for well data, it's standard practice here has data logged. You can go in and choose either a curve or discrete data within the database. So if I was looking for any electrofascies that had data logged, for example. Or one of the new things is we can actually define now a date. So we have a little calendar that can pop up and allow you to choose a specific year, a specific month and a specific day for check the dates of the last modified in the database and use that as a parameter. If you wanted to increase your query to include a zone of interest, standard practice with bubbles and analysis sticks and reports, you choose your interval be it a specific interval and you pick whichever zone you're interested in and then the parameter within that that you want to refine down. The well header information is very much the same. You see there's a few more items on this list actually, but this I'll mention again when we talk about the IPIC commonality in the well header. The well name tab is new. Now this is where you can type in a list for any wild cards or specific, specific wells if you wanted to, um, to create the, the query or you can point to a, a text file. You could pick a text file that contains a list of wells. So for example, if you had a well list created in IP, you could go and point to that file to populate the list in here. Now, if you move the file, this, will, this link will break and the well list won't work. So just bear that in mind if this is something you want to use. Okay, now another change that's come in to help improve the well query workflow is you'll notice that the title has been automatically populated with this first component I have used. Now I can save this and away we go. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm not going to use that query, I'm just going to use anything that has survey data selected or loaded. Okay, give it a title. And everything else in here is the same. The only difference now is 
you have no manual control over which wells are added or removed. Everything is controlled by this query. So if I hit OK, this is going to create my project and switch us over to it. So we switch over to the data tab, you'll see I now have this project that has a lot of wells. Let's find out how many. 184 wells. Another new item that's come in with the dynamic projects is additions to this filter for the project browser well list. So I can go in here and select a filter and let's pick a particular well basin and select that. So my project browser now only shows 15 or so wells. What this now does is filters through to any interaction you have within IC for building things, selecting things, for example, a map. So in this well selection dialog, instead of having that 184 wells to filter through and find the ones you want, it's controlled by what you see in this project browser. The same for when you were to export any data, that list is reduced and controlled by the filter on your project browser. All right, and that can be removed. And another addition to the dynamic projects work is this filter will remember the last, I have it set to five, but that can be modified in your file options configuration section that the memory will remember the last few that you've used. So if we actually go into the file options, there's something else to talk about. With regard to the, the work that's gone into dynamic projects, we now have set a limit to a project number of wells. And this is more for the new users that are building their databases and filtering out their projects to help them keep control on the number of wells. This can be modified, of course. So this 20,000 by default can be changed to 40,000, you know, anything. This number is unlimited, actually. Um, but the idea being you want to maintain a low number, as low a number as possible to improve performance for these projects and the workflows you're going to be doing. OK, now the first time if you already have a static project set up that has more than 20,000 wells within it, you're going to get a little pop up message telling you that it's exceeding the limit set for the database and will only show the top 20,000. You go into your configuration options and reset that so it includes all your wells and that's all you need to do. OK, so we've gone over the dynamic projects, we've touched on the filters and the queries. Something else I wanted to show you with the queries is we've got some additions now when it comes to interrogating the data. So you can actually go from the right click menu now and see a list of which wells are the result within that project and you can also save that as a text file wherever you choose. So that could be used elsewhere. Another neat trick that we've added in is the ability to drag and drop onto your desktop and that creates a text file so that you can use elsewhere. Okay, if I go back to my other project, We've now touched on the dynamic projects, the updated queries options. The last thing on this list is the IPIC commonality. Now, all that we've done this time is we've adjusted and introduced new items to the well header properties. We've added things like this API number and comment are new. And in doing so, with this extra information with location, we've split up the tabs a bit more. So now we have location and description and our position is very similar. We have our lats and longs on there and down at the bottom we've broken out the reference elevation values much like IP does. The rest of these are the same. Okay. The next section we want to look at is the charts. I zoom in a little bit, there we go. 
So there are a few things new to the chart, some display options and interrogation tools, as well as the ability to visually QC the data for a well. Now the way we've built this is with a dynamic project or a dynamic template. Now we have one set up as default, so you could right click and insert a template and up at the top here we now have a new option called chart dynamic templates. The well sticks were already there and the IP templates were already there. If we click on here, we have a default template which is just a well header with a well name on it. And if you select this with a well, let's pick a different well and hit OK, what's happened is the template has gone into the database for this well and searched through every table in your database for the discrete data, determined whether any of the data types are populated and then created a data panel with the content. And it works its way down, so from left to right you're going from the top to the bottom of your list. Populating the data and then it does the same for any logs. So it, again, it works its way down your curve groups and populates the data panel with any curve populated there. What you'll notice is these data are coloured because they are linked to a dictionary. So if you have a dictionary set up, it will pick up the colours. If it does not, especially for the curves, it will go to your database default display style. So whatever you've stored in that database manager for the colours, that's what will get picked up. If you want it to be histograms versus XY traces, that kind of thing. Once it's on the chart, it is just a well stick. So it can be treated as in changed and modified as required to build the data that you want. And the, obviously the, the display can be changed now as well. What happens if you were to change the well? Because we're now treating it like a well stick, the data displayed on these data panels is what was on that well stick. But if you go in and choose a template, I've made a couple extra in here as well. So if I just pick this one, it's got the logo on it. It's going to search through for that well, go into the database as it did before and populate a data panel for each data type with something entered. So you'll notice this well has a lot more panels, so it took a second. But the default display styles, you can see I've got some images in here, dictionaries picked up, graphic or otherwise. Plot styles for curves at the end here. This is um, collection data, this is my petrography, I believe, in here. And again, this is now for you to go in and modify as you wish. Okay, you can create a template from the right click and insert the well header. So for dynamic, all you need is a well header. You can pick what attributes to add, how many columns to use, what kind of background color you're gonna pick. I seem to always pick the same color. Uh, the range and scale you need to set to start with. Data panels, this is where you can change how high they are, what kind of background you're going to have. The same for the data selection as well. If you want the borders, how often you want your depth markers to be done and any extra text or logos, this is all where you do this. And once you have that set up, there's a new option here on the right click template option for saving a dynamic template. As per usual, you can give it a name and that's it stored now. So if we were to go into the template manager, I will just show you, there's that template I just created. And that can now be applied to any well. Okay, so that's the dynamic templates. Once you've got obviously your data on there, there's a couple of new things I want to show you with regard to the display of the data. First thing I'll do is hopefully down on this bottom section of the kind of the baseboard of the charts you can see 
the well name in the bottom left, the data type, and then the depth references to the left. This middle section here, we've added the actual content. It used to always say for this one, this would always say epoch, but now it's telling us that my mouse is sitting in the upper Cretaceous. There's the Paleocene, I'm moving over to Lithofasces, Fluvial, Shoreline, and it works when you're in the category plots as well. On log plots, it's telling you the, the name of the curve and the value where your mouse is. And again, with the comments, because that text would be could be quite long, we haven't added that in. But for the most part, your interval data and your logs and your picks will display the data down in that baseboard. A couple of other changes that have been added, or fixes that have been put in, we can now have our stat curves plotting as the histograms again. And it's the same set up as usual. Pick your histogram from the drop down, your colours, whether you normalise it, and it will now plot. Some of the other changes, if we go to zoom into this point comment section, for a while we had kinks in here that regardless of how far apart the text was, you would always have a kink in this. We've returned it so that any point comment will have a straight line unless they are very close to each other and this kink will appear and that's only so you can see the text associated with it. The next item on our list for display options is the category plots. So when you had update one, you could point to a data type, pick up the dictionary associated with it, and it would plot a column for every entry in that dictionary, and then color in the data associated with those dictionaries in the columns. What you can now do, you have options. You can actually use from this drop down, you can plot all the columns in the dictionary as before, or where the data is present. So again, we're doing a bit of dynamic checking here. Does the data exist for this well? Yes, plot a column. If it doesn't, don't plot the column. Or you can plot things as per your choice. You can go in and change which items specifically you want to see. All right. So we've added that extra bit of flexibility in there. The next thing I want to show you is the edit data options. So to start with, if I just quickly insert, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll insert that dynamic template again. Well, okay, so I can see in here I have some, here we go, lithofascies, let's start with something we, we're aware of. Down in this section here we've got our lithofascies. In the edit data dialog now, where you have a data type that has a boundary associated with it, so a top, base, depth and boundaries with your legend, the top and base options for style have been added directly to the entry, the data entry edit mode. So for example, this purple section here, I've got confident top and base boundaries and the paler blue purple up here, I've got confident top and base boundaries. If I was to change the base of this to nonconformity and apply it, you'll see that the, the boundary has added the unconformable wiggles What's also happened is the unit below, the top of that has become unconformable. So you don't have to go in and set it both separately because that's a coincident pick. They are both changed at the same time. So we're, again, we're saving clicks and improving our workflows here. Something else we've improved is, if I close the edit data, is when we browse our data, when you added data or modified data, for example, if you ended up with overlapping data and you checked the resequence and test the data, you'd get a message popping up telling you there's something wrong here, you've got overlapping data, but it wouldn't help specify which units it was. So we've added that in and added the highlight visually 
to draw your eye in to let you know, like, look here, something's off with the depths. Or, for example, let's go here, 1819.34. Again, we've highlighted absent units in that we have zero thicknesses. That doesn't mean to say you can't keep that. Clearly, you can have absent units in here, but it allows you to get your eye in and identify what needs to be looked at. Again, improving that QC along with that all data display template. OK. So the last thing I want to show you with regard to charts is our new interactive scrolling and zooming. So if I switch projects really quickly and open up a chart with a few objects already on here. Let's make this full screen. OK. We have a map in the top corner here. We've got a correlation, a very simple correlation, single data panel for each. We have a cross plot and we have a projection line on this chart. What I want to show you are some of the new scrolling and zooming options that are available. So if I start with correlation, I can select a well, so that hopefully you can see where my mouse is here. This single well here, if I press and hold the control key and roll my mouse wheel, you're seeing the scale of the data on that data panel is changing and scroll again. So the scale on this well stick has changed. You can see it's very precise up here in the scale compared to the other well sticks. So if I hit Control and A, I'm going to use this same method on every item, every well stick. So again, hit the control and scroll my mouse. You'll see the ties are all keeping track and coming and going as needed. That's the control, that's our zooming, that's our zooming. If I, sh if I hit the shift key and where my mouse is, if I shift up with my mouse wheel and back again, you'll see the, the scale isn't changing, but the depth coverage in these well sticks changes. So I'm moving the depth up and down with my mouse wheel. Okay, if I move on to the map, so if I zoom in on the map, if I hit the control and mouse wheel, the AOI on this map zooms in and out as per where my mouse location is. You can see it changes depending on where my mouse is. Okay, if I hit the alt key, and the left arrow or the right arrow on my keyboard, again, up and down arrows, the AOI is changing. And this is directly on the chart. I haven't had to open up the map window to change this. This is all on the map, on the chart. So I can control that AOI directly from here with the keyboard shortcuts now. Now there are release notes that came out with update two with a table on it that tells you all the new combinations. The help file has the information in it as well. You will need that to get you started. There are quite a few options. So for each object, there's a few variations with the, the control, the shift and the alt keys. OK, if we go down to the cross plot, again, the control key and my mouse wheel will zoom in and out the AOI. So my X and Y axes are changing as per my mouse wheel moves. If I hit shift, and scroll my mouse wheel, the Y axis will change. Much like that depth change on a well stick, this is the Y axis, so that vertical movement. Okay, let's bring it back up. And let's try, if I go the Alt key and press my left mouse button, I have that manual control that I can drag the AY around to wherever I want it to be. Okay, so we have that extra bit of control now on what's being displayed on these objects. If we go down to the projection, what I want to show you is on the map you saw that red line. That's my line of projection. Okay, so it's going from the northwest to the southeast. I've got my orientation tag on my projection. A few of the things, I still, my shift key and my mouse wheel will still control that vertical axis. Go back down. Okay. 
and the control key will change that vertical scaling. So the shape and size of the projection box itself doesn't change, much like the map or the cross plot, but the, the vertical scale can change. If I hit the Alt key and left click mouse button and drag horizontally, you'll see these the well sticks are kind of rotating around, the surfaces are changing. My orientation tag in the top left has changed to east. My projection line on the map, once I've removed my mouse click, updates to match where I'm now looking. So you can actually now have a 360 degree view based on that center point of your projection line. And it's just an alt and a, and a mouse key. I think it's amazing. So you can, obviously that's me back to pretty much 180 degrees from where I was. I'm now looking southwest rather than the northeast. Okay, so that's the new scrolling and zooming that we have in place on the charts. The same movement around the charts, hitting enter on a section to zoom to it, still is all there. We haven't removed that. The last thing I want to show you is under the resources section, we now have the ability under the GIS shapefiles to, we've improved how we can filter things. So you can pick your attribute and under this list is not this different, this is still the same, but we now have a browse button here for the value. So you don't have to actually have to remember whether the attribute says condensate or C or cond or gas or oil. You can go in and just select items from a list. So equals, you always go and pick out one of those items. If you want a range, we can use a, a colon here and select multiple items. All right, and if we go for the includes, we have a comma separating each of the items. So this is great when you've got lots of attributes in there, lots of options, it makes sense to have these options visible for you to choose rather than trying to guess what they're actually called or what numbers to put in if it's a value. All right, that's the last of the, the updates for here. If we go back to our demo charts. I have last one to wrap up and just make sure that we've covered everything. So we've got the new dynamic projects that have been added, allowing you to pick that query and automatically have your project list updated when you add new wells in. If the, the criteria changes, you add data to an, a specific well that didn't have it before. Those wells will automatically be updated when you refresh your project browser or reopen next time. We've got the well queries that have been updated, additional well lists can be added. We can drag and drop that well list onto the desktop. We have the extra well header information brought in with IP. The commonality is still the same with regard to synchronizing and configuring it. It's all still the same, but we bring over that extra data now. The chart toolkits, including that fantastic all data well stick template that goes to the database, finds all that data and helps you display it visually so you can QC things that way. We've got that extra data showing in the display, the bottom baseboard, the, the amazing scrolling and zooming, the additions to the category plot options and that boundaries in the edit data. I've put up a little expected for 2017, so this is due out this summer. We're going to get ternary plots put in there. We have some more improvements to chart workflows we're going to look at, including some drafting options, including expanding our interpretations. So making sure that the tags are associated with the data when you're using it. Make sure that you're clear on what you're looking at. And we're going to have a look at the ASCII importer as well. If you have any questions or comments, please do get in touch. One of the questions we've had is, can you convert a static project, current static project, into a dynamic project? And the answer is yes, you can. You just need to be aware that if some of the wells within your current static project don't meet the criteria of your query, they will no longer be displayed 
in your project browser. What we've done though is any charts, correlations, cross plots, anything like that that uses a well that obviously still exists in the database but doesn't meet the criteria to populate your project anymore will still be there for you to go in and manually remove it if that's what you want. We don't want to remove any of the work that you've done with that well. So just be aware of that if you are changing from a static to a dynamic. Again, all this information is in the release notes, so please do take a look at them if you need some information. If not, just give me a phone or an email, and there's also support as well. All right. Thank you so much for attending, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Get in touch with any questions and comments, all right? Bye.